Good morning, church. We are glad that you've tuned in. Uh, I know it's a little bit different. We're kind of out of the ordinary, but um, to kind of keep some routine, we've, we're obviously we're continuing to, to have worship because even though we can't meet here on Sunday mornings, we're, we're still the church because the church is more than just the building and the paint and the, the walls. And the church is us. Um, so I invite you this morning as, as we're, we're kind of going to the songs. Um, Matthew selected the songs, and um, the first one was one of my favorites, and, and I love the chorus of it. It's, uh, uh, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, the light in the darkness. And, and I really like that lyric. So what I'm going to ask you to do is over, while we're singing this song, do a couple things. One, ask yourself, if that is who God is, if God is our way maker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper, and the light in the darkness, what does that mean? Like, what is that telling us about him? And the second thing, as we're kind of playing through this song, I kind of want you to think about, kind of meditate on, if he is all that this song is claiming that he is, what does it mean for us? So I invite you as we, as, as we play, uh, as we sing, kind of take, take a moment, take a step back, and, and think of those lyrics uh, and just what do they mean? You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you. I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, Wait.
Hello, church family and all the rest of our friends who may be watching. Uh, it's great to be with you. I hope that all of you are doing well. Uh, we miss being with you. Uh, certainly, uh, this, is, uh, this is a tough time. This is the second week of us not being able to gather in this building, uh, and it's hard. Uh, it's hard not being able to get those handshakes and get those hugs, and so we miss uh, every single one of you. But i got to tell you, I'm so proud of you as a church. Uh, I have talked to many of you on the phone, through text, uh, through email, and I'm just encouraged by everything that I'm hearing. You guys are checking up on one another, you're calling one another, you're staying in touch with one another, uh, you're doing things for those that are the most vulnerable during this time, you're getting out, you're running errands for folks, and uh, uh, basically you're being the church. Uh, I put on a church sign this week. Uh, the church has left the building, and uh, we've known all along that the church is not a building. Amen? And uh, the church is a people. And in the Old Testament, God provided a temple for his people, uh, but in the New Testament, God provided uh, a people for his temple. 
And so I just want to encourage you to keep being the church and keep being the light uh, in the midst of the darkness. And so as we're in these unprecedented times in history, uh, we've just been reading God's Word and we've been doing our very best to listen to what God is saying. And, uh, and how many of you know that's what we need to be doing? I mean, I was thinking uh, this past week, you know, if you've got something going on with your car, you go to a mechanic. Uh, if you've got something going on with your house, uh, you call the repairman. Uh, if, you, if your clothes are falling apart, uh, you, you go to a seamstress. But, but what do you do when life is falling apart? You go to God. And that's what we have uh, been doing. We're, we are going, we're going to God. And, uh, and we're seeking God in these difficult days. And uh, God has something to say to us. Uh, we're in a storm. You know, the winds are howling. Uh, the waves are crashing. And uh, these are uncertain times. Uh, but this is not the first time we've been in a storm. And this won't be the last time that we find ourselves in a storm. And the Bible has a lot to say about what to do when you're in the middle of a storm. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, just for a few moments. What do you do? when you find yourself in the middle of a storm. Let's pray together. God, we need you. God, we need to hear from you. And so in these few moments together, we just ask God that you speak to us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you do? What do you do when you're in the middle of a storm? You know, unfortunately, when it comes to a storm, uh, what a lot of people want to do is, is they want to blame God. Uh, they'll often blame God uh, for the situation. They'll, they'll blame God for the storm. Uh, or, or maybe they'll question God. Uh, you know, God, where are you? Why are you allowing this? Uh, God, God, where are you in, in the middle of this storm that we're going through? And I ran across a quote the other day. And I want these words to kind of steer us in our thinking today because the longer I live, I have found these words to be so true. Our key thought for today is it often takes the darkness of a storm to show us the light of God's presence. I want to say that again. It often takes the darkness of a storm to show us the light of God's presence. And I want us to look at uh, a chapter in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 27. And if you have your Bibles at home and you want to follow along, that would be awesome. But we're going to be in Acts chapter 27. And, and here in this chapter, we find some men who are on a boat, and they are in the middle of this massive, crazy storm. And, uh, and, and we read about this storm that they're in, and this thing went on for several days. And in verses 18 and 19, uh, it talks about the crew, and uh, they were terrified. They were so terrified that they just started throwing cargo overboard. It's a little different strategy uh, when you're on a boat and you're in the middle of a storm. I mean, if they had a case of toilet paper, they threw it overboard. If they, uh, if they found a few extra containers of Clorox wipes, they were tossing them. It's interesting how, depending upon what kind of storm you're in, determines what's most important. And when you're on a ship and you're in a storm... Uh, you just start getting rid of stuff. You don't collect stuff. You get rid of stuff because, because the stuff weighs you down. And so they believed that this storm was literally going to take them out. Uh, th this was a storm they thought, there is no way that we're going to be able to survive. And we see in verse 20 where the storm would just not go away. It says, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, the storm continued raging. I wonder how many of us would use those words to describe the current situation that we find ourselves in. This, th this thing will just not go away. It says, the storm continued raging. And then they said, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. That phrase just kind of stands out to me because I think that's an attitude that is certainly present in our current crisis. People are People are just giving up hope. Uh, they're looking at the circumstances. You know, people are, you know, this virus has taken away our sports. Uh, this virus has taken away uh, our jobs. This virus has, has taken away our, 
our finances. It's, it's taken away our, our social gatherings. We're, we're thinking, you know, this, this must be it. We're not going to make it. How in the world are we going to make it through this? It says, the storm continued to rage, and they gave up all hope. Verse 21, after they had gone a long time without food, Paul, the apostle Paul, stood up before them and said, men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Now, unless you're familiar with this story, uh, I know when you hear that, you're thinking, what, what in the world is Paul talking about? Well, just a few short verses back, we see that Paul had actually advised those in charge not to sail this voyage. He said, if we set sail now, it's going to be disastrous. But in spite of his warning, those in charge still decided to sail on. So what Paul was doing was, he was kind of gently reminding them that if they would have listened to him, they wouldn't be in the storm in the first place which brings up a few things about storms that I think we all need to understand. Sometimes you find yourself in a storm, and in reality, the storm is your fault. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Now, now we don't want to admit it. We usually want to blame the devil or, or blame somebody else, but sometimes you find yourself in a tough situation, and when you really look at it, you see that you cause the tough situation. You know, sometimes you're in a storm because you spent too much money. Sometimes you're in the middle of a storm because your emotions got the best of you and you said something you shouldn't have said. Sometimes you're in the middle of a storm because uh, you were late to work every day. You know, it's not the devil's fault you lost your job. It's, uh, it's your fault because you, you forgot to set the alarm earlier. And so sometimes we find ourselves in storms and, and we have caused the storms. Maybe that's why they gave up hope in this situation because it was their own fault. Those in charge made a decision to go out when the environment was risky, even when Paul warned them not to set sail. No, notice I specified those in charge because more than likely, there are some people on this boat, and it probably was not their fault, which is the second thing that you need to understand about storms. Sometimes we find ourselves in storms, and, and it's not our fault. We, we had nothing to do with it. And if you can just imagine in, in this situation that we read about in our text, I don't know how big this crew was, but chances are, more than likely, there were a few guys standing around talking and having conversations like, hey, 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 you know what? Paul's had some experience. This isn't the first time Paul has been on a boat. And, and so if, if Paul says that we shouldn't go, then we probably should not go. But again, those in charge, including the captain, said we're going. And so what do we know about storage? Sometimes we bring storms upon ourselves. But then sometimes we experience storms simply because we live in a broken world. And in a broken world, there are storms. Whatever the case may be, in the middle of the storms, sometimes it's easy just, just to give up hope, isn't it? It says, the storm continued to rage, and they gave up all hope. But I want you to remember, it, it often takes the darkness of a storm to show us the light of God's presence. This is what Paul says in verse 22. He says, but now I urge you to keep up your courage. And I just want to say that to some of you who may be listening this morning. Keep up your courage. Keep up your faith. This storm is not going to take you down. He says, keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Then in verse 23, he says, Last night, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. Now, let's just hit the pause button there just for a moment. Uh, how cool is that? I mean, Paul says, I'm on this boat in the middle of a storm, and this angel shows up and stands beside him. So sometimes I think we don't even realize all the ways 
that God is with us. The, the Bible talks about how God sends his angels to protect us. And, and I believe with, with all my heart that what we see with the physical eyes is not all there is to see. And, and I just want to say today, in the middle of the storm, take courage. God is with you. God is with you in this moment. You have no idea all the ways that God is with you. He could be with you in the form of a supernatural being of an angel. Most certainly we know he is with us in the form of his spirit because his spirit indwells us. Paul says, an angel of the Lord stood beside me. It was Paul, this same Apostle Paul, who told young Timothy one time over in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. He said, everybody else deserted me. No one stood beside me, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. In our storms, it's the Lord who stands beside us. It's the Lord who is with us. It's the Lord who gives us strength. David said in Psalm 16, he said, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. It's all about who's beside you. It's all about who's with you. You know, I've learned, if we could just realize how much God is with us, it changes everything. I mean, when you realize that God is with you, it changes your mindset. It changes your posture. It, it builds your faith. It redirects how you think about things. It, it changes how you respond to the storms of life. It's kind of like the little boy who walked to school and had this bully that was harassing him every day on his way to school. And uh, every, every day as he would make, make his journey to school, this bully would, would jump out from behind somewhere and, and just beat him up. Well, some of his friends were telling him what to do. They gave him a lot of different advice. They, they, they told him, why don't you try walking a different route on your way to school. And so he did that for a few days, and it wasn't long till the bully found out his different route, and, uh, and, and once again, he, he, he beat him up. Another person suggested that the little boy carry a stick, and so he, he carried a stick. The bully caught up to him, took the stick, stick away, and beat him with the stick that he was carrying. And so everything the boy tried to get rid of the bully did not work. Until one day, the little boy was on his way to school, and uh, the bully uh, jumped out from behind the bushes. On, only this time, the little boy put up his fist and, and challenged the bully and says, come on, I'm ready. Come, come on, I, I, I'm ready. And, and all of a sudden, this bully could not even understand where in the world did this young man all of a sudden get his courage? Where in the world did, did he develop you know, the, this courage that he was showing on this particular day. Well, not intimidated, the bully started toward the boy, intending to beat him up again. All of a sudden, out stepped the boy's father from behind the bush. The boy's father was 6'4", 250 pounds. Uh, it, it's amazing how your mindset can change depending on who's with you. And of course, the bully took one look at the young man's father, and he took off, and he ran the other direction. Uh, it, it's amazing how much confidence you can have, uh, no matter what you're going through, when you just realize that there is someone greater than you with you. When you recognize that even though you're in a storm, the Lord is right there with you, it changes your perspective. Changes your mindset. He's strengthening you. It's all about who's in the boat with you in the middle of the storm. In fact, there's another powerful story about the disciples one time being in a different boat, caught in a different storm. Uh, what's funny about uh, this storm and this story is that uh, while the disciples were on this boat, Jesus was on this boat with them, but guess where he was? He was actually asleep in the hull of the boat. You remember that storm? 
The disciples did what we do so often in the middle of the storm. I mean, they freaked out. They went crazy. This isn't fair. We're going to die. Jesus, where are you? Jesus, why in the world are you allowing this? Don't you even care? Are you going to do anything? And Jesus gets up and he says, why are you so afraid? Oh, you of little faith. And then what does he say next? Jesus says, peace, be still. And immediately, you know what happened. Those same disciples just a few moments earlier who were scared out of their wits experienced peace in the middle of the storm. Why did they experience peace in the storm? Because Jesus was on the boat. Listen, real peace is not found in the absence of storms. Real peace is in the presence, is, is knowing that you have the presence of Jesus in the midst of the storm. Real, real peace isn't found in a trouble-free life. You will never have a trouble-free life. I will never have a trouble-free life. Following Jesus doesn't mean that we do not experience difficult situations in our lives. If someone told you that, that's bad theology. Je Jesus even said in his own words in John 16, verse 33, he said, in this world you will have trouble. I emphasize the word will. In this world you will have trouble. That's a promise from Jesus. But I'm so thankful he didn't stop there. He said, but take heart, for I have overcome this world. Real peace is not the absence of storms. Real peace is the presence of Jesus in the midst of the storms. Jesus is with me. Jesus is, is right beside me. He, he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. That's his promise. Look at verse 23 again. And I want you to see what Paul said. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. In other words, you know what the angel of God was saying to Paul? Paul, you can't go down in this battle. Because God's got more battles for you to fight. And some of you need to hear that this morning. You can't go down in this battle because God has more for you to do. He's not finished with you yet. God has more people for you to reach. God has more opportunities for you to serve. God's got a greater calling for you in this life. You're not going down in this. The ship may go down, but the storm will not take you out. In fact, this is what I've learned in the storms of life. God will use the storms to draw us closer to himself. I believe that's what's taking place right now. I'm not saying God caused this storm, but I am saying this. God, God is using this storm to draw us closer to himself. You know, the last few days I've actually had individuals ask me, but Kevin, what do you think God is up to? What, what do you think is going on? What, why do you think God is allowing this coronavirus to sweep across the globe? And you know what? I don't have the answer to those questions. I don't, I don't even pretend to have the answer to those questions. If I knew all those answers, that would make me God, right? And I'm not God. Uh, I'm a sinner. And, 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 and some of you are looking at the screen right now saying, I, I'm thankful you're not God. Uh, and, and so... I don't know, I don't know why we're going through this storm. I don't have all those answers. I, I don't know the answers to all those questions. But, but here is one thing that I do know. God can use this storm to draw us closer to himself. Just like all the other storms we face in life. God, God often uses the storms to fulfill his purpose. Listen, this storm may have surprised you. This storm may have surprised me. But this storm did not surprise God. He, he's doing something in you. He's, 
He's speaking to you. He's strengthening you. He's deepening your roots. And, and he wants to teach all of us something as we make our way through this storm. Verse 25. So keep up your courage, men. Keep up your courage, ladies. For I have, what? For I have faith in God. That's what Paul says. I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. In other words, my faith is not in what I see. My faith is in what God says. I have faith in God that what he says will come to pass. Paul says, listen, my faith is not in the boat. My faith is in the one who commands the winds and the waves. My faith is not in the ship. My faith is in the one who created the trees who made the ship. I have faith in my God that it will happen, that he will see us through, that he will be my deliverer that he will be my provider, that God will be my healing, that, that in the middle of the storm that I will experience his peace. I have faith that it will happen. Folks, here, here's the bottom line. You can't control when a storm blows up. You, you, you can't control how severe the storm is. You can't even control how long the storm will last but you can control what you believe and you can control where you put your faith. Amen? Th those are the things that you can control. And my faith is in the one who created the winds and the waves. My faith is in God. Who is God? The psalmist said in Psalm 46, verse 1 and following, it says, God is our shelter and our strength. In other words, in, in the middle of the storm, he's our hiding place. He's our safety. He's always ready to help us in times of trouble because he's with us. Because he's with us, we will not be afraid. It goes on to say, even if the earth is shaken and the mountains fall into the ocean depths, even if the seas roar and rage and the hills are shaken by violence, we might put it in contemporary language. It, it might sound like this. Even if I lose my job, even if the economy does fall apart, even if I get sick, I will not be afraid. Why? Because he's with me. My God is with me. My God said he will never leave me. My God said he will never forsake me. He's my strength. He's my source. He's my redeemer. He's my rock. He's the bread of life. He's the living water that satisfies my soul. He's my comforter. He's the one that ministers to me in my time of need. He's my peace. He's my peace, even in the middle of the storm. I hope today you have found that peace. I hope today that you are not necessarily just looking at what you see, but you are trusting what you know. And one thing that we know as followers of Christ is that our God is with us, even in the middle of the storm. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much that no matter what is going on in our life, even when we have more questions than we have answers, there is one constant thing that we always know. And that is you are always with us. God, help us find peace in that today. Help us rest in that today. And we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you today and thank you for listening.
Everything. 